Area's McDonald's restaurants, home of the Big Mac, by National City Bank, the Performance Bank, and by Country Hearth Bread, baked locally by Lewis Brothers Bakery. And now, from home and center, here are Mike Blank, Chuck Lofton, and Jim Roush. And a very pleasant good morning, everyone, from the Holman Center in Terre Haute. It's IHSAA Boys Basketball Semi-State Action, where this morning in the first game of the Terre Haute Semi-State, it will be the Evansville Regional Champion, Princeton Tigers, and the champions of the Terre Haute Regional, the Cloverdale Clovers. Hi, everyone. Mike Blake along with Jim Roush and Chuck Lofton. Right now, as you can see, they're introducing the teams. They're, they're in a very spirited mood the Holman Center is filling up a lot of Hoosier hysteria is upon us before we do the starting lineups guys good to be here boy it's good to be here too you know the uh, place is supposed to be sold out and it really is it's going to be a while before everyone gets here but we have a great game tournament plays is just so much more exciting you the fans are with it more the teams are ready uh, it's, it's just an exciting place to be well, as you know, these two teams are coming in with fine records. The Tigers are 20 and 5. Cloverdale, in its first trip ever to the semi-state, is 21 and 6. Again, the starting lineups will be coming up momentarily for these two teams. In the second game, it'll be Washington against Floyd Central, with the two teams surviving the afternoon, meeting tonight here on Channel 14 for the semi-state championship at Terre Haute. Now for the starting lineup. For Princeton, a guard 5'6 junior, Jim Davidson. For Cloverdale, a 5'11 junior, Bob Speedy. This is Jason Hughes, a 5'9 junior. He'll be opening at guard for the Tigers. His counterpart, 6'1, a senior, Jerry Neese. The big guy coming out for Princeton, number 41. Brad Victor. <laughs> Keith Welty will be his counterpart for Cloverdale. Once again, Kit Taylor, number 45, will open at one of the forward positions. Chad Tucker, the top scoring threat for Cloverdale, is at another forward. And completing the Princeton starting lineup, junior Chris Schaefer. And completing the starting lineups, Roger Shrum. The coaches for today's game meeting at center court. Jim Jones of Princeton. And returning to his seat there, Al Tucker of Cloverdale. You know, the Cloverdale Clovers, Mike, are 21 and 6 coming into this game. And of course, anytime you reach tournament time, you can't say it's just because of one or two players, but it would be easy to draw that conclusion with the Clovers. Jerry Neese and Chad Tucker are two scoring threats. Tucker is a 6'6 six, six senior, Neese a 6'1 six, senior. They scored all but eight points in the big win over Terre Haute South. We're coming back with the opening tip right after this. Since Old National introduced money market checking and savings, more people have invested more money with us than any other bank in town. For good reason. You earn high interest, your money's insured, and you have the experience of Evansville's oldest and strongest bank working for you. If you haven't signed up yet, take it from those who have. The best place for your money market checking and savings is Old National Bank. Your bank for life. At Red and White, we feel it's our civic duty as a progressive merchant to promote the welfare of our community. Hi, I'm Howdy Bell, and we'd like to help the churches, PTAs, or any nonprofit organizations. Have your group members save a thousand complete Red and White brand labels. Bring them into your local Red and White supermarket, and we'll give your treasurer a check for $15. It's one way we can help those that make our community such a wonderful place to live. For details, stop by your local Red and White store. Tell a friend. 
This year, over one and a half million people will see Kenny Rogers in concert. You got to know when to hold up. Know when to pull up. Don't miss the excitement. No. With Crystal Gale. You've been talking in your Kenny Rogers, April 22nd, Roberts Stadium. Tickets on sale this Sunday at noon. See Kenny Rogers here at Roberts Stadium, April 22nd. Coberstein Trucking is your versatile trucking and excavation company. Call Coberstein when you need hauling of materials. They've got the right equipment for the job. Call Coberstein when you need excavating, ditching, or clearing. They've got the know-how to do it right. Call Coberstein for grading or dozer work. Coberstein employees are skilled for every job they tackle, and they handle each job like the experts they are. For hauling, digging, excavation, call the versatile trucking and excavation company. Call Coberstein Trucking, Highway 64 in Princeton. Back live at the Holman Center. We're ready to go. The first game of the Terre Haute Semi-State. Jim Roush being an Evansville coach. It has to seem strange as we look at the two officials. Jesse Lynch on your right as you look. And his counterpart, Chuck Wyckoff. It's got to seem strange coming up to Terre Haute for a semi-state. It certainly does after being in Evansville for so long, but this is a beautiful place, and uh, I'm sure with the enthusiasm shown here today, we're going to really see two teams fight it out. Once again, Princeton in the dark red jerseys, the Clovers of Cloverdale in white trimmed and green. Good to have you with us, 14 country. Should be a whale of a basketball day as Hoosier hysteria gets to another level. The semi-state here at Terre Haute. Jason Hughes looks things over and begins to set it up. We expect Cloverdale to be a very patient team. Princeton, of course, can, likes to run with it occasionally, but they too will be very patient testing the waters here. Trying to get it into Victor. Davison saves it. Victor on the turnaround. Beautiful move. And Big Brad Victor, who had 36 in the big win over Bossy, gets the first two of the semi-state. Well, and Princeton's coming out of the game uh, starting to press very early. Little half-court pressure there. <laughs> this is Tucker, and we're tied. He is averaging 24 and a half points per game. He is a uh, academic All-State first-teamer, and he is also a darn good uh, candidate for All-State honors altogether. And he, of course, is the son of Coach Al Tucker. Here's Jimmy Davison. Coverdale is right in a 2-3 zone, but they're going to have to be a little more aggressive. Jim Davidson, who hit one of the biggest shots of his life last week in one of the overtimes, gets a basket here. The ball bounces away, and it stays to Cloverdale. You know, when Princeton's win over Bossy, Mike and Jim, uh, uh, we didn't hear a lot about it. Uh, in the newspapers and so forth because we're so busy watching Victor score, but the guard play was very good, the part of Hughes and Davidson. Jason Hughes with a great, great length of the court dribble and pass off to Chris Schaefer in one of the overtimes. The shot by Trum was errant. Here come the Tigers. They lead 4-2. to two. Victor blocked, and Nice gets the rebound. Give Tucker the block. Nice with the ball. Tucker takes it around, puts it up. Schaefer with a rebound. Both teams are playing a zone defense. 2-3 and a 1-2-2. Victor from the side. Big bounce. Can't go. Batted around and Nice controls it. Jerry Nice is regarded the quickest player of the Clovers. He's number 11. And he was all regional first team in the big win over Terre Haute South in Bloomfield a week ago. He pulls the trigger. And we're tied again at four. Terre Haute South coach Pat Rady said after that game uh, in which the Clovers beat them that Nice was the best player he has seen in Indiana this year since Derek Dowell. Well, Hughes controlling it around the baseline. He's in tall timber. Victor with a rebound. Batted around, and it's controlled by the Clovers. The ball would not drop. Brad got up good off the court, but it couldn't go. Nice almost loses it. This is Welty. Trum with a rebound. Back up and in. Just a little out of position on his defense there, uh, Victor was. Cloverdale had an 18-point lead over Terre Haute South. So these guys can open it up. Jimmy Davidson. 
these two teams know what they want to do. They're well coached. They know exactly what they want to do. Knee slows down, puts it up. Kim Davidson with a rebound. The score is tied at six all. About 4.40 to go in the first quarter. Chris Schaefer. Hyde, Sch Victor, and a foul underneath the first foul of the game. And it's Roger Schrupp. You know, I thought we might see a more patient game at the beginning, but they're uh, they're running and moving it really well. Here's another look I, at it. I think we just see a uh, uh, arm was tapped there a little bit on the uh, shot right there. You notice right on his arm. And that's Roger Schrum picking up the first personal as Big Brad Victor goes to the line, where he is a 79 percent shooter. That ball seems to be a little slippery out there for some reason. They've had a few chances there that uh, seems like it slipped out of their hands. And Victor gives the Tigers an 8-6 to six lead. A tremendous contingent up here from Princeton. In fact, all four schools are very well represented. Cloverdale is only, has only 330 students, but they sold over 1,900 tickets. Tucker from the side. And Kit Taylor with a rebound and a foul on Brian Scott. Good rebound. Jim Jones gives Kit Taylor a pat as Brian Scott double zero commits the personal. Coming in is or there you see Speedy taking a seat. Keith Welty that we'll see in just a minute number four is now in the game. He is basically the third scorer if there is a third scorer for Cloverdale. They give the ball to him when Nice and uh, Tucker don't want to shoot. Schaefer, nice pass. Jim Davidson, bingo. Jim Davidson is hot. Six, what? six points, and it's a 10-6. Princeton lead at the four-minute mark. Foul on Brad Victor. Jesse Lynch says he gave him the hip. And that's the first foul on Princeton and on Brad Victor. Made a little body contact on that. Just got a little too close on his defense. Both teams are playing uh, well, I think, uh, Mike, from the standpoint of knowing what they want to do. Jim Jones instructing there momentarily. Weldy with a shot. Schaefer with a rebound and a foul on Cloverdale. Roger Schrum picks it up. Good rebound by Schaefer. And there's Al Tucker. Let's watch it again. As he went up there, you just see there was just two players around him. Made uh, kind of closed him off. Chris Schaefer can board. He's primarily the, the assist man and the second leading scorer in the club. But Chris also does very well as a forward. Good penetration by Hughes. Fans it out. Schaefer dumps it down to Victor. Turn around. Davidson again. This one can't go in, and it's controlled by Tucker. Tucker also leads his team in rebounds. Has 290, a foul on Davidson. Davidson was not in position on that play. As, as you can tell, he kind of moved in and out, and I think he wanted to get in position. He just didn't have enough time. If you take a look one more time. He just stepped over there. He was a little late in stepping over there and just got a little too close to him, as you can see. Whoop. That's a poor mismatch, too. Jimmy's 5'6", yeah. Tucker is 6'5". So he was giving away a lot of height on the exchange. As Cloverdale now tries to tie it up. Tucker batted around. He's keeping it alive. And another foul, or ball goes out of bounds. It'll be Cloverdale's ball. They're calling this, uh, this game rather tight today. Well, when you've got two big men underneath there like that, you, you're going to have to stay on top of it. And I think that's what they're trying to do. Tigers with a four-point lead as the Clovers. They, too, have been playing well, and Jerry Nice hits from the side. Nice averaging over 20 points per game. We talked earlier, Chuck, about Victor. Victor's been actually, although he's averaging 20, he's been averaging about 25 over the last 10 games. He has really been hot. Davidson a little too far in good position and rebounding by Tucker. I'm impressed with Tucker's play already, uh, Mike. No contact on the fall down, and Mr. Waldy can't get it, but there is a foul underneath, and it's on Princeton. 
Chris Schaefer puts up his hand. This is what it looked okay. like. Okay, uh, as he shoots that ball up, uh, Schaefer just gets... He just puts too much body action in it there, trying to block out. Back to live. This is Tucker. And Brad Pichter goes high off the ground for the rebound. Hughes in a hurry. Throws it away, going for Schaefer, and it'll go back to Cloverdale. We're I think it's one of those instances, Mike, where Schaefer had the shot shot before he had the ball. Two minutes, 15 seconds to go in the first quarter as Cloverdale brings it up, trailing Princeton by two and a foul on Jason Hughes. Boy, they're calling this game tight. I just can't help but feel that this floor just seems a little different for the Princeton players, uh, Mike. There just seems what, to be... What, you call it the tartan floor? Is it a... The tartan floor, yes. It's a... It's, it, it is a little different to get used to. It's a hard, compressed rubber. And Indiana State, back in the days when they had Larry Bird, had a lot of success Beautiful on this steel. thing. Jump ball. Jason Hughes gets the Princeton fans fired up. Fine effort as he'll jump it up with Jerry Neese. When Bird was here, not many universities had a floor like this, and so they were very successful on it. Now more and more schools are, are uh, adopting this kind of floor. They'll jump it again. Outstanding athlete. Hughes, of course, as the Princeton fans know, a fine running back. One of the better running backs Princeton's had in recent years. And also, I believe, went both ways, went on defense. Back the line as a linebacker and defensive back. But boy, the kid can sure play basketball. Still 10 to 8 as the Clovers try to tie it. Taylor. Beautiful steal. Beautiful steal yep. to Hughes. Up. Goes all the way. And Mr. Tucker gets the rebound again. Once again, Jason Hughes hits the deck. No whistle. Try to get it in. Speedy tried to get it into the big guy, Tucker. We're down to a minute 25. Now, Speedy, he'll put it up. Short rebound, Princeton. Schaefer. Good, strong move, and in. All right, that was a nice move. Nice those move by of, Schaefer. Those are the kind of Played plays that well. Those are the kind of plays he used against Bossy in that four overtime thriller we saw a few nights ago. Jerry Nees. Victor with a rebound, up in a hurry to Hughes. One on one, by in and out. Lovely. Jason Hughes just had a couple of tough, tough shots there that just would not drop. 45 seconds, 12 to eight Princeton in the first quarter. Again, the winner of this game will advance to the championship tonight against the winner of the Floyd Central Washington game. The Hatchets brought a great contingent from their area. Cloverdale, if you're wondering where it is, it's 40 miles from Terre Haute on I-70. It's right between Indianapolis and Terre Haute. And they brought, they brought the whole community. 20 seconds to go. Princeton clinging to a 12 to 8 lead. Down to 12. They'd better hurry. Five seconds. Tucker. That's going to be it. That's the end of the first quarter. We'll be back. But at the end of the first quarter, it's Princeton 12, Cloverdale 8. McDonald's is really turning breakfast around and giving you a fast break. We'll serve you scrambled eggs and an English muffin for less than a dollar or three delicious hotcakes for less than a dollar. Or right now, our famous Egg McMuffin for less than a dollar. Now that's a break. And we'll serve it all up in a hurry. Now that's a fast break. And that's how we turn breakfast around at McDonald's. A sign of the times, the times when bread was baked fresh every day. So the last slice tasted as fresh as the first. With country hearth white bread, you still get that taste of the past. Because we still put that flavor, that goodness, that freshness into every loaf. Look for the hearth on the familiar yellow wrapper of country hearth bread. A sign of the times. Country hearth bread. 
Back live, we're about to start the second quarter. Jim, uh, Cloverdale did not get off a very good percentage shot at the end of the quarter, but there was a reason for I that. I think that uh, Princeton was putting a little pressure out on front with their guards, which kind of threw their timing off from trying to get the shot that they wanted. Well, it worked, and the Tigers open the second frame with a 12-8 lead. Mike Blake along with Jim Roush and Chuck Lofton. Brad Victor. Just a beautiful pass in the middle to Brad uh, Victor, and he turned around and put it right in, which he's very capable of doing. So Victor and Davidson with six apiece. It's a 14-8 Princeton lead. A foul on Jason Hughes. Jason picks up his second. This was didn't quite see that. Maybe it must have caught him on the arm. We're going to get another peek. It seems as if Cloverdale is still trying to Mark. find their offensive game. There's the foul. Just a little bit of body contact, a little too close to him in the well in his body. Welsey <laughs> comes to the line shooting 50%. He's, this is his 61st free throw. He missed it. And the big guy, Chad Tucker, puts it back up. He has four points. He's going to have to keep some pressure on that, a Tucker underneath in order to uh, keep him off the boards. He is their scoring threat. He shoots 55% from the field, and he's a good rebounder. He has 270 so far. This is Schaefer. Nice shot as Chris Schaefer puts in his fourth point. Friends are starting to work against their 2-3 zone real well. Seven minutes to go in the second period. 16 to 10. Princeton with the lead. Hughes with the attempted steal. Gets it. Tremendous effort by Jason Hughes. A whistle. Traveling called. It'll be Cloverdale's ball. On that last exchange, Jim Jones thought there was a foul, but Hughes got fouled. By the time they got down here, a whistle had blown, and it goes back to Cloverdale with the traveling. And a foul on Chris Schaefer. Well, I think they're trying to uh, a little bit close on their defense, but uh, I think Schaefer kind of felt there was a little elbow in there on the uh, drive. That's his second personal, the sixth team personal. Hughes and Schaefer have two apiece. Jim Jones comes over to check at the official scoring table as Chad Tucker goes to the line. He shoots 74% from the free throw line. Not a good guy to foul. He's their first All-State candidate in almost 20 years. And Tucker puts in his fifth and sixth points. It's now 16 to 12. The Clovers are back within four as the Tigers bring it down. Davidson down to Schaefer. Batted around. Hughes pumps it down to Kit Taylor. And a rebound. Cloverdale and a foul on Kit Taylor. The rebound by Brian Scott. So Princeton now in foul trouble in terms of number of fouls. Cloverdale can go to the line here. I think uh, Taylor just got a little over anxious on the count of the shot didn't drop and tried to follow it up and made a little contact there. As Mr. Neese returns to the line, he shoots 68 percent to go along with his 24 or 20.4 per game average. Neese is a quick player. Also a very fine baseball talent, we're told. But he was all county and all sectional and all regional. And Mr. Neese brings him back within two. So the Tigers now want to get it revved up. 16-14, 6-15 to go in the second quarter. Cloverdale stayed pretty much in their 2-3 zone, as you can see. Traveling call on Kit Taylor. That's the second traveling call they've had in the past few minutes against them, which is a little bit unusual. I don't think against Bossy they ever had that problem. I think they're going to call a timeout. Jim Jones wants the Tigers to talk it over. 
There is 5.58 remaining in the second quarter. It is 16 to 14. I think a good time to call a timeout. Right. I, you know, sometimes, Mike, when these uh, shots just don't fall, a team kind of gets over anxious on the rebounding and on their defense a little bit to try to make up for that. And uh, certainly Princeton's had some uh, shots in there that were almost in and then especially on a couple drives. If we're looking in on the Cloverdale, that's Al Tucker who has already shed his coat. And now into the Princeton huddle where Jim Jones is instructing his Tigers. They have a very precious two-point lead. Traditionally this year, when teams have played Cloverdale, they have double teamed Chad Tucker and Jerry Neese. And that's when uh, the other players who you don't hear about too much, Wealthy and Speedy, for instance, have taken over. Would you double team these guys today? I, uh, not, not knowing, uh, uh, you know, previously what they've done, uh, from what I've seen here now, I don't think so. I, I think I just stay with what I'm doing. Uh -huh. You know, fellas, it's a delight to do tournament basketball, but when you get to this level, you know, everything seems to be a, it's up tempo, just a beat. Everything uh, is a crisis, you know, you, every you, play, every pass. And they, I think these teams are rising to the occasion. 16-14, a two-point ball game here in the second period. Cloverdale's Jerry Neese ties it up. <laughs> That's what makes him so good. Rather than throw it off or throw it back to the top of the key, he decided to go ahead with a shot. I think that's why Rady said he's one of the best players he's ever seen. He's not afraid to do that, and he can do it successfully. Hughes, and Jason Hughes puts the Tigers back up. That's his first basket to go along with a couple of important steals, and it's 18-16, Tigers. Again, we wish the Washington Hatchets success in game two. They will be coming up against uh, Floyd Central. Chad Tucker from out as both teams start to heat up. You notice how they're using Tucker out as a guard now. Yeah, they're bringing him up against Davidson. He's such a great shooter from out, so they're going to make use of his talent that way. Coach Al Tucker said he lets his son and Jerry Neese go just about where they want. Victor in a lot of traffic, puts it up. Brad Victor, another fine effort, eight points thus far. And it's the Tigers back up by two. 440 to go in the second quarter. At halftime, we'll try to get you an interview with a coach. We'll also be hearing from Dave Shellhouse, the coach of Indiana State, who's the, the host school here, so to speak, here on the campus of Indiana State, Jimmy Davidson. Tucker with a big rebound. Tucker has a flock of rebounds, particularly on the defensive board. Brian Scott, two fires. Schaefer pulls it off to Davidson. Princeton up by two, gets it into the paint to Victor. Won't go. Hughes is there. Down low, Taylor to Victor. Some of those shots just seem to... They just do want to fall. They just do not want to fall for Princeton. Chad Tucker. Hughes again hit the deck. Down to 340, and Princeton's going to slow it down a bit. Both teams hitting the boards with a vengeance. Good crisp passing by both teams, and a foul underneath. A foul on Chad Tucker. There's a couple of... Fresh recruits coming in. Joe Warren, number 23. And Brian Price coming in for the Tigers. Price and Warren, who have spelled relief much of the season, come in as Victor will inbound the ball. That foul was Chris Schaefer's first, by the way. I mean, uh, Chad Tucker. Nice. He'll go all the way. Oh, he just took that, well, that ball right in there with authority. Nice with 10 points is the game's leading score, and it's 20-20. Princeton's got to hit a few shots from out. To traveling open up that again. Middle a little more. Yes, they've, had a, they've had a problem not only with traveling, but as you just mentioned, they've really had trouble underneath. And uh, it looks like they're going to have to rely more on those outside shots. And hit well, it'll them. open up the middle a little bit more for Brad. Right. Approaching the three-minute mark in the second quarter. Cloverdale will try now to get the lead, something it hasn't had for several minutes. Princeton led at the quarter. Tried to get it down low, and it's a steal. Hughes has it. 
Hughes down, up and in, and a foul. Beautiful The play. basket is good, and a foul on Chris Welty. Keith Welty with his first personal. This we'll get another look. This was hard to see down here on the actual, uh, but uh, it looks like he must have moved in. He moved in on him. Never got set. Boy, a tremendous shot. It's one of those where the, the shooter, I don't think, gets a chance to see it go in. But Jason Hughes hit the money and just did what he did so effectively in the overtime. Put in a free throw for the Princeton Tigers, who now go back up by three, 2.40 to go in the second quarter. Again, the Holman Center holds about 10,700, and it is packed as Keith Weldy hits from the top of the key his first two points. The Clovers are now a little bit more lively on defense. They're, wor they're working a little harder, yes. That's what they're working for, too. Once again, the turnover hurts the Tigers. There's a good example of what that little you extra bet. effort will you do. Bet. So now Cloverdale back with the basketball. Speedy. Jerry Neese. And a good rebound by Joel Warren. Warren, a good athlete. Here's Schaefer. And a foul, boy, a lot of bodies flying, and a foul on Cloverdale. Foul on Rob Speedy, number 10. Brian Scott is the player. I don't know if we'll catch it here. There's the foul, but now watch this. The action up here. At the boy, this is that was a hard hit. He hit darn, the floor hard. He heavy collision. The, uh, the impact, I think, knocked the wind out of him, and I think that's what they're uh, worried about right now. We sincerely hope that is all. Hope it's not the hip. He's in pain. Again, these guys playing all out. There is one minute, 54 seconds remaining in the second quarter. It's a 23-22 Princeton lead. That's Al Tucker tending to his very talented young man. Scott has been a... A terrific player for this team all year. He emerged right up from the JV on the sectional and has contributed a great deal as a sixth man. This kid is in pain. He says it's his left knee. I just uh, heard him talk to the doctor. wonder if he jammed it. They're pulling now at his ankle. Well, I'll tell you one thing. They both went for the ball and, uh, you know, without any. Jim Jones, in the meantime, gets his troops. That's Chris Schaefer and also Jason Hughes. Taking a break. Let's watch it one more time. Boy, ouch. That was Brian Price, who fortunately avoided injury, but Brian Scott is not as fortunate, and they are tending to him right now. Don't forget, a lot of excitement in Evansville is abounding. Not only did it happen last night, but the NCAA will be in town again tomorrow. Scott is coming out momentarily. Gets a nice hand from this crowd. He'll be leaving the area. Again, 1.54 on the clock as Princeton has a 23 to 22 lead. And Jason Hughes goes to the free throw line. Jason with five points. So Hughes now. Victor can't get it to drop and a strong rebound once again by Keith Weldy. Nice gets it back, dishes it to Tucker. He'll try it. So the two big guns fire blanks and it goes out of bounds. It'll still be Cloverdale's ball. Just talked with one of the assistant coaches, Mike, and he said that uh, they think uh, Scott is okay. Just just uh, had the wind knocked out of him and uh, might have shook up his knee a little bit. But they think he's going to be okay and back out here. We certainly hope so. As Chad Tucker shoots from the side, Schaefer got a hand on it, but Nice controls it, and he turns it over. Rob Speedy with a turnover, and the Tigers will bring it down. It's interesting to see uh, 
Tucker play out on the floor. 6'6 six, six, uh, man help bring the ball up and then play out as a guard. We're down to a minute 15. Price Hughes back to Price. Ficker will pull the trigger from the side. It's short and Weldy has the rebound. So again, it's going to be a very close score here at halftime it appears one minute to go exactly it's a 23 22 lead and a foul offensive foul on Rob Speedy kind of uh, went in like a, a halfback yeah, through the line <laughs> duck his head and charge through there kind watch him lower his shoulder bam <laughs> So a substitute. Davidson's back in the box. Jim Davidson yeah. is back in. I think they're going to try to go for one here. Down to 49 seconds. Still a one point. Princeton lead as they'll slow it up. Hughes and Davidson complement one another very well out there on the court. They're, they're uh, guards that seem to know each other very well. Davidson is another one you don't want to foul if you're Cloverdale. Jimmy shoots 83% from the line. He's a 50% shooter from the field. But Hughes has been making the shots heard around Gibson County and around the Tri-State lately. 22 seconds to go. Wow, almost stolen. Hughes. This is Victor. Chad Tucker down to six seconds. He's going to take it all the way up and in. Three seconds. One. That's the end of the half. We're coming back in a moment, but at halftime, it's Cloverdale 24, Princeton 23. Princeton Farms began back in 1923 as a family operation. Today, Princeton Farms is known around the country for its hybrid popcorn. Special strains of hybrid corn assure tenderness, quality popping, and good old down-home flavor. And popcorn is America's most popular and least expensive snack. It's been around a long time. Princeton Farms popcorn, the proof is in the eating. Look for the bag with the bright red Princeton Farms barn at your favorite grocer. It's a fact that you have more savings and investment options now than ever. That you need a sound financial plan today if you hope to reach your objectives tomorrow. That's why people today need National City Performance Banking. National City is the bank with a history of local involvement and responsibility. The bank where you're kept informed by the professionals at any of National City's 12 convenient offices. Bank City Smart, citywide at National City, the Performance Bank. Once again, Mike Blake along with Jim Roush and Chuck Lofton live here at the Hullman Center. An exciting first half, 24-23, Cloverdale by one point. Jim Roush, your impressions? Well, I think, you know, Princeton's shooting is not quite as sharp as it was last week. Uh, Brad Victor just seems to be a little bit off on his little touch there. But uh, it's a well-played ball game. I mean, we've, we've had some turnovers here. I don't know whether it's uh, according to the floor or not. Uh, Mike seems like it's causing a little trouble here. But this is going to be a ball game right down the end. It's interesting to see uh, Tucker play out on the court a little bit as a guard. He's got, uh, incidentally, Jason Hughes, I thought, has been very good. He hasn't had, uh, he started out a little slow, but he's he's been a catalyst. I think the key that to uh, Princeton is, is their guards. I think that guard play is what got him here. How about Cloverdale, Chuck? You've been spending much of the week reading up on the Clovers. They've got some talent. Yes, they do, and uh, they are doing exactly what they want to do, and that is get the ball to Nice and also to Chad Tucker. As long as Princeton uh, can keep at them, though, keep the ball away from the other three players on the court, They'll be in the game. I think one of the things that uh, Jim started to mention was the fact that Princeton's having a little bit of trouble with those high percentage shots. 
that, again, with the guard play is one of the things that brought them here in the first place. And they're going to have to improve on that, especially Brad Victor when he's out of the middle shooting those outside shots. We got a lot more good basketball coming your way. Also, someone who Jim Roush knows awfully well, a name synonymous with North basketball and now Indiana State, former All-American Dave Shellhouse. We'll be talking to Dave, the coach at Indiana State, right after this. Precision transmission will inspect your transmission, adjust the bands if applicable, change the fluid, and adjust the linkage. See Precision Transmission in Evansville. Feeding your family fast food just so you can afford to eat out? Before you unwrap another assembly line meal, take your family to Dick Clark's Family Restaurant in Princeton. And Dick Clark's Every Wholesome Bite says homemade. Sizzling steaks, tempting side dishes, Italian specialties, and a garden fresh salad bar. And Dick Clark's Every Price says come back again. Dick Clark's Family Restaurant in Princeton. Homemade family meals at a price that invites you back. Dick Clark's Restaurant supports the Princeton Tigers. It's here and you show it that feeling of pride. And you're gonna know it when you step inside Hooks the Wall. Fortunately, there's more to life than illness. So there's more to your neighborhood Hooks drugstore than medicine. Thousands of household, beauty, and gift items for your shopping convenience. When you visit Hooks, look around. We're full of surprises. Hooks, the one for convenience. Hooks, the one. Carter Country, tonight at 6.30. Once again, it's halftime here at the Holman Center where the Princeton Tigers just a point out of it, 24-23 Cloverdale with Jim Roush and me and also Chuck Lofton. Delighted to have a familiar name to Evansville basketball fans, the Tri-State fans, the head coach at Indiana State, Dave Shellhouse. Dave, some very fine hospitality. Tell me, uh, you're not just a casual observer. Uh, have you enjoyed seeing this state tournament? Oh, this has really been nice for Terre Haute. It's been nice for our facility. I had a lot of people even from the media who've never even been in, in our facility, so I think... You know, that's good exposure for our university and uh, and the town of Terre Haute. So I'm real happy that the uh, semi-state's here this year. I know it was a tough year, but a, a very rewarding one in terms of experience for Shellhouse and the, the Sycamores. What, as you look back on it, uh, what, are the, what are the positive things and what are the things you're excited about in the spring as you start to recruit? Well, I think that, uh, you know, some of the positive things, we've got a lot of young people on the floor all year. You know, John Sherman Williams uh, was a newcomer year in the Valley. Everybody's pretty excited about that around here. Uh, I think Mark Golden, Rick Fields, uh, both have a real good future, and, and we played a lot of young people. Uh, we went into the season feeling that we were going to be outmanned a lot, and it turned out that we were. But uh, our recruiting, we're trying to get some big people uh, to come in here. I think a point guard's a need for us. So uh, it's it was uh, it was a long year in terms of wins and losses, but it was a learning experience for everybody. I know some of you appreciate, and uh, it's vice versa. It's a mutual admiration society. This guy in my left. Is it true he taught you everything you know? Pretty much so, yeah. Jim, you're going to take credit for, for getting this guy well, in the, I started off on the right foot? This is a meeting, you know, I, you know, I didn't think it was ever going to happen. Me here on uh, television with uh, one of the North High greats in this state. It's, it's just, this is a great place. And, I, you know, coming up a couple of weeks ago and seeing your team play was a great thrill for me to know that I had maybe just a little part in Dave uh, going into coaching and, and being the, uh, a coach that he is. You made the comment he's going to turn this program around. And, I believe uh, it, Mike. I tell you, I got great faith in this guy, and I know that He's a great man for going out there and, and getting the talent, and, uh, and uh, he'll, he'll get this thing straightened out. One final thing, Dave. Any, any recruit, can you, can you mention anybody that has signed recently? Uh, is there anybody that uh, maybe yeah. in the tri-state area? Well, we have two verbal commitments. We've got a guard out of Ohio that we like real well. He uh, could be the player of the year in double-A over there. Uh, he's made a, a verbal commitment to us. Plus, we've got a 6'10 kid out of Michigan who's made a verbal commitment. And we have a couple kids here today. We thought it'd be nice to see our gym full, so. <laughs> Best of luck. Thank Dave Shellhouse, congratulations. Yeah. Now, let's find out who did what in the first half. Chuck, tell us about those stats, please. Okay, thank you very much, Mike. And uh, it's no surprise that the uh, Cloverdale Clovers are getting their scoring punch from their top two players that we've been talking about in this game. Chad Tucker has 10, as does Jerry Neese. A couple of points each from Keith Welty and Roger Shrum. Interesting note that both teams are shooting terribly from the field. Uh, 
Princeton shooting 35%, Cloverdale 34%. And then for Princeton, the leading scorer uh, up till now is Brad Victor. He also has nine rebounds and he has eight points. And then Jimmy Davidson has six. We're back live from Terre Haute in just a minute as this Channel 14 sports special, Princeton versus Cloverdale, continues. loss is not serious unless it happens to you then it can make you feel embarrassed self-conscious if you're losing your hair because of medication or natural causes hair replacement clinic can help hair replacement clinic treats each individual as an individual private consultations are conducted by experts who understand hair replacement these hair pieces are the most natural available and fitted just for you people everywhere are learning to feel good about themselves shouldn't you hair replacement clinic west franklin Today, smart financial planning requires solid, reliable information. That's why people today need National City Performance Banking. National City is the bank with a history of sound management and stability. The bank with more offices to serve you than any other. National City Bankers will keep you informed so you can put your financial objectives into perspective and move toward your future with confidence. Bank City Smart at National City, the Performance Bank. Thatch could be choking your lawn. You can remove that harmful thatch quick and easy with Snapper's exclusive Thatcherizer. Attached to a Snapper self-propelled high back mower, the Thatcherizer removes dead grass and leaves from your lawn, then vacuums the thatch into the grass catcher for easy disposal. Now for limited time, save $54.95 on a free Thatcherizer with purchase of a Snapper self-propelled high back mower. Snapper, discover the difference. Jerry's Power Equipment, Princeton and Yonker Brothers in Mount Vernon. The Princeton Tigers are back on the court, ready for the second half here at the Terre Haute Semi-State. Princeton will start again in the second half as we await the Cloverdale Clovers. They have a 24-23 lead, but going for the Tigers. Again, the starting lineup of Schaefer, Victor, and Taylor on the front line. Davidson and Hughes out front. Chad Tucker, number five, will jump with Victor. It'll be Welty, Shrum, Speedy, and Nice completing the starting lineup. We're underway, and... Once again, the ref says, let's try it again. Well, he just didn't get it up straight that time. <laughs> Bat it around, and the Tigers control the tip once again. Davidson wants to go down. Back out to Schaefer. He'll shoot it. Chris Schaefer. After a four-point first half, Chris gets his first basket. And Princeton goes back on top by a point. An off-balance shot by Tucker, a rebound by Victor, and here come the Tigers. Taylor's going to take it down, up, a foul. Nice and the play. basket is good. Chris Taylor. Let's watch it one more time. Or on the drive, it just looks like he moved in on him on the uh, as he went up. Never got set. You know, one of the keys of, the, of that play was the rebound by Victor. That's his tenth of the day. And although we've been talking a little bit about how he's had trouble with the outside shot, he does have ten rebounds. So the Tigers very quickly are up by four, 28 to 24. Playing with a purpose here in the early going of the third quarter. Guards are applying a little more pressure there on the th on the uh, throw in, but basically they drop back into their zone. Those were Kit Taylor's Kit's first three points of the game, but boy, they came at a good time. Turn around, Victor gets a block or a foul on Brad Victor. Hey. 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 
Going to the line will be Roger Shrum. Coming up after this game, of course, is Washington and Floyd Central. We wanted to uh, get an interview with Stan Neal, but he and his players are watching some tapes before that game starts, and of course, we understand that. And uh, we also wanted to talk to Jim Jones, who you see right there on the bench, but he uh, took his team off the court immediately, probably to talk out why they're down by one point at the half. Whatever Jim told him, it's working, because his Tigers are back on top. Weldy in a lot of traffic and a foul underneath. That was just beautiful the way uh, number four there. I have to get his... Uh, Chris Welty. Yeah, Chris Welty. He moved around there on that rebound. He's what saved that right there. And he, it's... Unfortunately, mm -hmm. it's Chris Schaefer mm -hmm. picking up his mm -hmm. third personal. So Schaefer has to be careful. One of the key reasons the Tigers are 20 and 5. And this time, Mr. Welty puts in a free throw. He yes. averages seven points a game, and he now has three for the afternoon. He was first team in the uh, sectional. All-star team. And I think he played also well in the regional, Chuck. Yeah, he was on the second team, uh, all-regional team. Victor has position, but they keep it on the perimeter. The Tigers have a two-point lead. We've just started the third period. Down to Victor. And a rebound by Mr. Shrub. For as small as Cloverdale is, Jim, I'm impressed with their position. I, they, I am, too. They, they do get good position under there. Jerry Neese. He has a sweet shot. And Neese ties the ball game with 6.25 to go in the third period. 28 all. The Tigers coming off a tremendous four overtime win over the Bossy Bulldogs, previously top ranked and unbeaten. Cloverdale knocking off another one of the Giants, Terre Haute South, to make their first trip ever to the semi state. Tucker, good ball movement, and now suddenly the Clovers regain the lead. There aren't too many 6 6 men anywhere that can dribble and handle a ball. Handle like a that ball kid. like Tucker does. Prince is going to talk about it. Well, this is a good time to call timeout. 5.54 remaining. We again remind you, the second game will not be televised, but we will be back tonight. Hopefully, we'll get these Princeton Tigers to be with us. And it'd be nice to see the Washington Hatchets as you look in on the Princeton huddle. Jim Jones, again, I think a good time to call a timeout. Well, there's some things now that he's going to have to talk over, Mike. You know, uh, the shots are not falling for Victor like they did last week. Uh, he, he's he's going to have to get his confidence built up a little bit. He, if he makes a shot, he'll be all right. He's going to make some points here before the game's over. He's going to get his stride back. But I think one of the things that we're we're finding out that uh, after one shot, Princeton get uh, the Clover deal has excellent position underneath for the yeah, rebound. It seems also that that the Tigers are having a little bit of trouble following up on those shots. <clears throat> for instance, they'll take a shot from. Uh, out and then they won't follow it up. They've got such good position. There's no way you right. get in unless you foul. Unless you get that position first. There you see part of the large Princeton crowd that came down this morning. It looked like a convoy on Highway 41. Getting breakfast in Terre Haute was tough, guys. <laughs> yeah, you got to have breakfast. <laughs> the places were packed. 5.45 to go. It's 28 all, or 30-28. Princeton trails and we're tied. Victor. That's the one he needed right there, Mike. That's the one he needed. Chuck, he's going to be all right now. Basket is good. You know when you're a ball player and, and you have a, a streak like that, you think, my gosh, when is it ever going to fall? Well, a couple of times there on Brad Victor's shot, he kind of pulled away from his shot. He wasn't kind of pushing it all through with, it. On through with it. I know it's down here on this end. And Victor gets his 11th point. It's now a 31-30 Princeton advantage. Little, little uh, Princeton full court pressure now. Nice down to Tucker. Turns around. Shrum with a rebound. Victor with a rebound. Ball goes out of bounds. Knocked by Chris Welty. Good hustle on Welty's part as the Tigers will retain it. Taylor comes across to inbound it. Coach Al Tucker is uh, sitting about uh, six feet from me, and I feel some bad vibes every time one of his boys doesn't get a rebound. <laughs> I think he's going to haul off and hit me. 
Victor. Tough chance. Oh, boy, that, that was a tough miss there for Brad. Down to five minutes. Tucker. I tell you, I'm impressed with Tucker. He knows what he wants to do. 14 points for the co-captain and big gun of the Cloverdale Clovers, who now go back up on top by one point. Jason Hughes out to Jimmy Davidson. Schaefer. Davidson saves it, and they'll come back out and set it up. Hughes. Jason Hughes. That will help their offense a lot to bring them out a little bit now. They have excellent guard play, don't they? Tucker needs help. Over and back. Great defense causing the turnover. So with 4.15 to go, the Tigers of Princeton can now try to open it to three points. Again, they trail by a point at the half. But they're back up by a point right now. Jim Davidson. And Jimmy gets his eighth point. That'll open up the middle. Timeout, Cloverdale. 4.05 remaining in the third quarter, and once again, that momentum is back to the red. When, when those guards on the outside can hit a few of those and open up the middle, middle a little more, that's going to give Brad and Schaefer a little bit more uh, uh, chance to, to breathe in there. Earlier in the game, it, you know, Victor and Schaefer really had nowhere to move. That's they right. were very limited because uh, even though the guards were playing well, they were not out as far as they are now. And that, as you said, that opens it up for everybody and makes their offense a little more free-flowing. Well, you can tell that uh, Cloverdale's got confidence in that defense because they've played 2-3 zone throughout, and they, they know what they want to do in it. They yeah. do an excellent job of blocking off on it. Jim Jones, again, giving instructions. A long way to go here, but his team is starting, starting to gel, has played very well here in the third period. Hasn't played badly all afternoon, but... It, Particularly here, they came out in the second half, Jim. And I think the Tigers have, have turned it around. 35-32, they lead with 4.05 to go. There was a little ragged there in the first half, but I think things have just uh, now picked up to the point where we're back to that business where everything is a crisis here going down in this last half. And there's the number one Princeton fan, the Tiger. Now you're seeing a 2-2-1 full court pressure by Princeton. They're trapping over here to the side. The purpose of which they tell me is to cause the turnover. Tucker doesn't get it to go, and Taylor with a rebound. Brian Scott is about to come back in. The young man that was injured, and here he comes. Brian, uh, according to one of the assistants, Mike, uh, was shaken up uh, his lower back. He got uh, a bruise on his lower back when he hit the floor, but he'll be okay. Davidson gets it into Taylor. Davidson gets it back a little, little stout, and Speedy controls it. Tucker, he smells the basket. He wants to put it up and does. Chad Tucker with his 16th point. He leads all scores. Victor has 11 for the Tigers. Nice pass down to Victor. Schaefer with a super pass, but again, Brad can't get it to drop, and it remains 35-34. Nice. One thing about it, you just can't give them a moment out there uh, on those 15 footers out there. No, especially Nice. That kid is good from everywhere, but he has a, a very nice outside shot. Jason Hughes wanted to shoot it. Schaefer will. The Clovers had such good position underneath that bucket. Taylor was the only guy underneath on that shot. There was nobody that could move in. And Kip Taylor commits the foul. Taylor just grabbed the arm there. The ball goes bounding. The ball will take funny bounces at times. As you're watching semi-state action on WFIE-TV, Channel 14, Evansville. 
2.32 to go in the third quarter. As we watch it again, here's the foul right. He, he just reached in and grabbed his arm from the back. Back to live action, 2.20 to go in the third period. The Clovers with a point lead, Welty. And suddenly it's a three-point Cloverdale lead. Tiger's gonna have to get moving now. But I think the key, like you said, Chuck, has been that uh, positioning underneath there on the, on the zone. Brad Fichter on the turnaround. And a foul, uh-oh. Chris Schaefer, that is a big one. Schaefer with his fourth foul as we're going to watch it again. Well, now when the ball goes over to the other side, he just makes contact. I mentioned this several times how so many of the fouls are called that way this year. More than ever, Brian Price is about to check in undoubtedly for Chris Schaefer. They got to be careful. Tucker. Doesn't get it, Taylor with a rebound. He'll take it down, dumps it off, and a foul. That's 5-6 six versus 6-6. Six, six. Boy. And the foul is on he makes Roger a pass Shrub. over to uh, Davidson. Davidson, and you notice how the, just the, just makes contact. Shrub, Shrub commits the personal. There is one minute, 43 seconds to go in the third period as Jim Davidson goes to the line and now Davidson with his ninth point he had six in the first quarter has come back with three points here in the second half and the Tigers are back within one 38 37 two teams that can I think appropriately have the Cinderella tag put to them are playing their hearts out here in the semi-state. Nice is short. Davidson brings it across. Wow. He was in the land of the Giants. Hughes gets it back. Up. Won't hmm. go. And a foul Five. on Cloverdale. You had your two guards underneath. Two guards were down there with the big timber, wasn't it? This is what it looked like. That's hard to get up there to get a shot off in the, among that height. Speaking of timber, Jim, is Shellhouse bringing some recruits here today? I think he had several uh, young uh, recruits here. He was showing around, and uh, I met one of them. Uh, I didn't get exactly where he was from, but... That ball is just not bouncing right for Princeton. Brad Victor has had a couple of roll-off. Jason Hughes now will try to... And he gets it back. But yet it is a tied ball game. 38 all, a minute 23. Once again, Chris Schaefer is out of there. Chris picked up his fourth foul a moment ago. Turn around, Welty. Boy, he is money in the bank from the free throw line. They work that ball over to the strong side, and then they get it back to Welty to uh, take that little shot in there to the... Uh, free throw line 50 seconds to go Jason Hughes from way out rebound Mr. Nice they're really having some trouble with those outside shots today and another outside shot rebounded by Victor Hughes takes it down up and it's blocked Hughes again blocked Hughes will try it a third time I mean to tell you there was some action under there then Little bitty Hughes got his own rebound, tried to put it back up there, and you got the biggest man on the other team uh, blocking the shot. He hung in there. He sure did. But Tucker sent it into the into the cheap seats. 20 seconds to go. Hughes will try it again and does. Jason Hughes. Got his basket. <laughs> Maybe Hughes is going to try and block his shot. Down to four. Welty. There's a horn, no basket. We're tied. We're coming back. The score is 40 all. We'll be back after this.
Hi. There's been a lot of news lately about the safety of savings and investments. That's why it's more important than ever for you to know about the strength and stability of Old National Bank. We're the strongest, most financially secure bank in the tri-state. In fact, the strength of our capital provides more security for your money than most banks in this country. Check us out. You'll find we've been giving that kind of financial security since 1834. At Old National Bank, a bank for life. Remember how good fresh baked bread used to smell? How good it used to taste? How the last slice tasted as fresh as the first? Well, it still does at Country Hearth Bread. Because we still put that flavor, that goodness, that freshness into every loaf. You'll find it in our whole family of Country Hearth Breads and Buns. Reach for the familiar yellow wrapper today. And remember yesterday. Country Hearth Bread. Mike Wake along with Chuck Lofton and Jim Rouse from the Pack Hellman Center in Terre Haute. Scene of the first game of the Terre Haute Semi-State, which is absolutely even after three quarters. The Princeton Tigers in the dark red jerseys against the Cloverdale Clovers in the white. 40 all. Good to have you with us, 14 country, as we start the final eight minutes of this first game. The winner advancing to tonight's championship. And they will meet the winner of game number two between Washington and Floyd Central. It's in the air, and it goes off of Chuck Wyckoff, the official. They'll do it again. The officials have had lots of practice throwing that ball up. Yeah, that's one of the things that's, I think that we see a lot of this, this year. Jerry Neese. Victor with a rebound. Once again, it was a one-point ball game at the halftime. Princeton trailed by a point. They have tied it up. They went ahead by as many as three. Trailed by three as Jason Hughes in and out. Schaefer. That was a key rebound by Schaefer. Boy, they finally got that he, man underneath. He got him underneath there, and that paid off. Nice brings it across. Fans it out. Speedy doesn't like what he sees, and he'll start it over. Once again, keep your eye. Chris Schaefer playing with four fouls. Has to be careful. Tucker puts it up. And Victor with a rebound. I think the matchup that we see here earlier where uh, Brad Tucker brings the ball up and Hughes is guarding him is pretty... Uh... Victor loses it. Schaefer can't get it. And a foul on Kit Taylor. Taylor picks up the personal. It's a, it's quite an exchange. Watch again. Schaefer, who made one of those great left-handed shots, and I'm sure Princeton fans won't forget in that third overtime against Bossy. This one couldn't get to go, and then Kip Taylor picks up the foul. Jimmy Jones wiping his brow. It's very pleasant in here, but I'm sure for the coach and players and many of the fans, it is very, very warm. It's 42-40. Princeton leading as Roger Schrum throws up his first free throw of the afternoon, his third point. He averages just about four points a game, so he's he's right around what he normally does. 6.45 to go in the third period. Run went for the steal. Schaefer will put it up. Taylor, strong rebound. Kit nice, Taylor. Nice turnaround shot. You know, I have a feeling this one's going to go down to the wire still. Uh, it looks like it is. Yeah. Five points for Kit Taylor all in the second half. Welty. Nice. There you've got the three shooters together. Nice, Welty, and Tucker. I don't think the other two guys have taken a shot this half. There's some contact. There's some more contact. And the ball goes out. It'll be... Tucker wants to call a timeout. There was a lot of contact on the exchange there. Keith Welty is hurt, number four. 
He got popped in the nose by the elbow of Jason Hughes. We're going to take a timeout. We're coming back. It is getting hot. 44 to 42, Cloverdale. We'll be right back. Red and white, we feel it's our civic duty as a progressive merchant to promote the welfare of our community. Hi, I'm Howdy Bell, and we'd like to help the churches, PTAs, or any nonprofit organizations. Have your group members save a thousand complete red and white brand labels. Bring them into your local red and white supermarket, and we'll give your treasure a check for $15. It's one way we can help those that make our community such a wonderful place to live. For details, stop by your local red and white store. Tell a friend. Let's make that correction very quickly. 44-42 Tigers. I was looking at the very volatile Al Tucker, the coach of Cloverdale. When I gave that score, Al is uh, understandably uh, a little concerned. There were two, two plays. Both kids took a shot. Jason Hughes, again, leading the, leading the game in floor burns. Awfully competitive young man, and one of the, he kind of exemplifies this Princeton effort today. A very gutty, competitive one as he brings it down. He has taken some real shots. It's 5.45 to go. A two-point Tiger Lee Davidson. Victor can't hang on to it, and he gets it. Chad Tucker is a Division I prospect being looked at by Butler, among other schools. A foul as Nice picks. Foul on Jason Hughes. And this young man also can play in the college ranks, as, as can a, some of the Princeton players. Jerry Nice. Nice has 14 points. As Jason Hughes picks up his third foul. Two-point Princeton lead as Nice goes to the stripe. He is shooting 68% or was coming into the contest from the free throw line. So Neath with his 15th. Cloverdale with its 43rd. But the Tigers are still on top as they bring it down. Kicking the ball, it'll still be Princeton's ball. The Tigers right now are doing what they want to do, keeping those guards out, trying to make a little room for Schaefer and Fickford to maneuver around the, the middle. Davidson to Schaefer, batted around, retrieved by the Tigers. Down under five minutes, 4.55 remaining. Schaefer on the turnaround. Chris Schaefer with another big basket. Remember, he's got that fourth foul, but he continues to give it his effort. And it's Princeton back up by three. And palming the ball, Tucker turns it over. Right. Now you can see right there where he palmed the ball. Back to live action. Tigers in red, they lead 46-43, four and a half minutes remaining in the game. Prince is just working that ball around, trying to get the best man for the shot. Rebound, Jerry Nice. Welty from way out is fouled by Hughes. Jason got a little excited, really hit him. Just caught a little bit of his arm. Well, that's four fouls now on Hughes. That was one right there. I mean, we probably could have avoided that yeah. one. Yeah. So Welty returns to the line. 4.07 as the time becomes all important. And again, they continue to have problems at the line. The Cloverdale Clovers. Welty counters after a two-point first half. 
He has seven for nine on the afternoon. Princeton's just trying to work that ball and be really selective on their shots. Down to Victor, and a block, and a foul. They picked up the foul on that one, Jim, but still, I, I am amazed at that Cloverdale positioning underneath. That's probably their strongest point. Jerry Neese picking up the foul. As referee Jesse Lynch says, you got him with the body. As Big Brad goes to the line where he's averaging 79%. Again, came into the game averaging 20 points a game. But that's misleading. He's had over 25 points several occasions. And right now, Cloverdale is going to take a timeout. Again, three minutes, 50 seconds away from the finals of the semi-state. 46 to 44. Again. Sugar-free Sprite doesn't have any caffeine, but it does have something no other sugar-free soft drink has. Great lime and taste. And there you see the Princeton Tigers, and boy, Chuck, you just mentioned, they've got quite a gathering. It seems almost uh, as if they, well, they fill more than a quarter of this place, you can tell. They, uh, they must have acquired some extra tickets somewhere, but they're vocal, they're loud, and uh, they're seeing a good ball game right now. I think Floyd Central returned several hundred tickets, and Princeton said, we'll take them. I'm sure there are a lot of Tiger fans at home. As you see, now looking in on the Cloverdale Clovers, Jim, what does uh, Princeton need to do offensively now? Well, uh, I think they're trying to uh, work the ball around to be more selective on their shots, as you noticed. Uh, and they're also doing a lot of movement from the back to the weak side and trying to get the big man to cut from the strong side back to the weak side and work it in there real quick so you get that zone underneath there shifting and you can hit the seams in there a little bit better. That's Jim Jones talking with Jesse Lynch, the official, making sure that he... He lobbies for his point in these last three minutes and 50 seconds. It's good to let the official know, right? That's right. Brad Victor can't get it. Batted around. It's Princeton's ball off a of Tucker. So the Tigers stay alive with the basketball. They have the lead. Into Victor. A foul won't go again just having a lot of tough luck on those shots. You just think they're going to go in there and they just kind of skip out. Jerry Neese picking up another foul, number 11. That, that ball there should have dropped, but he caught it. Caught him on the arm. I'll tell you, he may have missed a few today, but I'll take his rebounding to oh. make up for him. His, his shot just looks a little, it just doesn't have that velvet no. touch that he had last week. It just a little jerky in there. And of course, for a kid, it becomes mental. Very understandable. Sure. It's... That one goes, and it's a big one. 47-44. I think Princeton's press has hurt, hurt the Clovers. Got them out of their rhythm. Nice. Loses it. There you go. That, that, that proved your point right there. Victor was uh, jumping up and down. He just lost the ball. He was looking for someone behind Victor underneath to pass it to. And they, and they lost the ball literally, Chuck. It is all the way under the stands. A little kid has just climbed <laughs> underneath the stands to get the ball and bring it back. Here he goes. Atta boy. Give that kid a free ticket for tonight, huh? <laughs> He's about the only one that could have fit under there. 335 away from the finals. 47-44, Princeton with a lead and the basketball. Princeton can be a little more select. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
Here they go to the half court press. Now he's bringing him out. Schaefer way across to Davidson, down to three minutes. Ball is kicked. It'll still be Princeton's ball. Well, we're at three minutes now, and the Tigers are up by three, and they are they're clicking the seconds off that clock very well. Taylor into Davidson. That, that war hoop from our batted around. Nice. Davidson gets it back. Jimmy Davidson with a big steal. Schaefer shouts instructions. Victor back out as the it's down to 240. Taylor. Princeton trying for its 21st win of the season. Batted around and a foul. Foul on Chad Tucker. He's a little bit over his back on that. As you can see here, they're trying to get the ball into Brad Victor, and uh, Tucker's a little bit over his back. They really need these free throws right now. Well, let's watch uh, Brad Victor's shot now. See the smoothness that you know that he has. There it is. Big, big free throw unofficially. Brad Victor with 13 points. Two and a half minutes, and the Princeton fans begin to feel it. Yeah. I think you were right about that, Jim. He just kind of loosened up a little bit yeah. and shot the ball. Tucker to Nice. Welty from the side. Ball goes out. It should be Princeton's ball. It is. Ball was knocked out of bounds by the Clovers. 2.15 remaining. 49, 44, Princeton by five. Taylor loses it. Looks like there's a little arm contact on that one, but. Chad Tucker can't get it. Shrum gets it back down to a minute 50. Nice in a lot of traffic. Victor. Off of Victor, it'll be Cloverdale's ball. Cloverdale doesn't look like the same team they were in the first half. They're really being shook by this well, defense. I, I think the uh, pressure has applied. They fly it out there. They've made Tucker work when he earlier there to bring that ball up. And you know, that takes a lot out of a big fella yeah. to bring the ball up. Uh, probably a little bit more. Uh, but he's worked both, both places underneath. He's worked out. He's worked, like you said, all over the floor. Mm -hmm. So right now, as we look in on the Princeton huddle and look at the Princeton mascot, the Tigers have a five-point lead, while these people, the Cloverdales. Cloverdale Clovers of the four-leaf variety trail 49 to 44. 149 to go. Once again, Jim Jones giving his chalkboard a workout. Of course, fouls are going to be important at this uh, this point in time, too. What do you see here, Jim? Well, it looks like he's, he's got his both of his... Uh, well, I don't know whether it was offense or defense. Kind of hard to see whether he was trying to do there. Offense, he looked like he had his offensive. Uh, but I would say what he was trying to do there, Mike, was down on offense there to show, put these uh, two big men in close to the baskets and keep it spread out out, out front. Kip Taylor. Telling Brad Victor to get his arms up. 149 away for the Tigers. Chad Tucker. Tucker with his 18th point. Davidson in a hurry. Down to a minute 35. Davidson cross to Hughes. Bingo! Jason Hughes. Boy, the guards did it by themselves on that one. Down to a minute 20. Nice. Speedy retrieves it. Gets out of a lot of traffic. A foul. Foul on Kit Taylor. His third. Here it is one more time. Boy. There's a lot of traffic, a lot of uh, height under there. He had to fight out of it. And uh, looks like Taylor made a little contact when he went up, came down. 
give Kit Taylor four personal fouls. One minute, 17 seconds away from the ending. This one is short. Speedy couldn't get it to drop. Victor with a rebound. Boy, what a break. They're going to full court press them now. And a foul on Terry Nice. Okay, Nice just slapped from behind, trying to get the ball, break it loose, and they caught his arm. So the Princeton Tigers are in the driver's seat. Jim, if you're Cloverdale right now, you're five, at least five points behind. We'll have to wait and see what Schaefer does. And there's 1-11 on the clock. What do you have to do once you get the ball? Well, of course, uh, I, there's... You're going to have to get it up here as fast as you can. First of all, I try to put as much pressure as I can. I don't know what their best pressure or defense is, but you almost have to go man to man and, and try to break the ball loose and go for the quick back basket. Jason Hughes again, and it's a 53 46 ball game, 110 to go. The Tigers closing in on the semi-state finals. And a foul on Jim Davidson. I sometimes think uh, Tucker kind of uses his elbow a little bit there to, to bring that ball up, and that's what gets these uh, defensive players caught a little bit. Yeah, uh, he's been doing that all day, but I, I think that part of it is he is so big and, and using that outstretched arm, it just kind of like a shield, even yeah. if uh, the player doesn't charge into him, he's kind of afraid of that. Tucker cuts it to six, 53-47. One minute exactly as Kit Taylor brings it in. Davidson. A foul on Rob Speedy. Speedy with a foul. As we saw a Speedy replay. He, there he we just, go. He just got uh, too tight. They just got too tight in there on their trap on him. And made some body contact in there. The Cloverdale fans were yelling that Davidson stepped over the line. But I don't right think he in did. there. Right in there. Just. I think they were yelling that he traveled. I thought one of the. But Jimmy Davidson puts it up and in. Davidson with his 10th point. 54 48, 54 seconds remaining. It looks good for the Tigers, but hold on. Prince is still putting their pressure on to try to keep them from getting the ball up too quick. As you mentioned a while ago, Chuck, what they have to do, and that's exactly it. Tucker puts it up. Schaefer brings it across. 40 seconds. Hughes. Up in a hurry. This is Speedy. Loses the race. Goes out of bounds. It'll be Cloverdale. Boy, great play, though. Great 30. play by Davidson. It's a five-point ball game with 34 seconds remaining. They just hustle all the time. They're just two hustling guards for Princeton. Jim Schaefer calls timeout. We're going to keep it here. Again, 34 seconds remaining. Well, it's not too late uh, for uh, Cloverdale to make a move yet. 30, uh, you take 34 seconds, it's plenty of time. Obviously, you're going to try to get it to Nice or Tucker. Uh, they've been putting it up virtually from everywhere. I think Princeton still got to apply the pressure because, uh, you know, with 34 seconds, you can still get that ball up the court. Plenty of time to score, and five points is nothing with 34 seconds. Well, it has been a tremendous start to our semi-state coverage hope you're enjoying it i know that chuck lofton jim roush and yours truly mike blake are enjoying it we'll be back this evening hopefully the princeton tigers will be back also they're 34 seconds away if they can hang on they lead 54 to 50. we wish the washington hatchets success and we hope we'll see them tonight as well the hatchets taking on floyd central in game two as we're down to the very short time across the state there'll only be eight teams left and then we'll be down to the final four this evening who's your hysteria cloverdale with the ball they trail by five 34 seconds as soon as it's in tucker inside oh, that was a beautiful a, that was a beautiful play and that's a big play too because now princeton's lead is three points 
Davidson gets it out of there and a foul. Jim Davidson with a big dribble. 24 seconds remaining. Tucker just made a nice screen and roll there that was beautiful on that inbounds play. Of course, that was just trying to get the ball from behind, and they made some contact on the arm. Jim wipes his hands on his socks. He wants he wants a good feel, and this kid has a terrific feel of 83%. Cool as a cucumber. 13 points for Jim Davidson. Five in the second half from the free throw line. Make it six. Five points for Princeton. A five-point lead. 20 seconds. They're keeping him from driving down to the basket. Tucker. Princeton's got it. And a foul. And that's all for Jerry Neese. Jerry Neese has just fouled out. Jim Jones says, we got it, Princeton. The Princeton Tigers have advanced 11 seconds remaining as they lead 57 to 52. Once again, Jason Hughes, who's been quite a factor. After five points in the first half, he has six, two of which came at the free throw line in the second half. 11 seconds remaining. Princeton opens it up to 58-52. Six seconds. Weldy from three-point range. The crowd chants it out. It's all over. Princeton has won it. The final score, 58-52. to We'll be right back. Learning. Bacon cheeseburger. It's delicious. May I help you? Oh, yes. Um, I'd like the, uh, the, the bacon. The bacon cheeseburger. Right. Certainly. I, I love the taste of bacon. So do I. I love how it tastes when you bite down through the burger and the cheese and you hit that bacon. It's a burger with the sizzle in the middle. The sizzle in the middle, right. Anything else? Uncle Artie. Artie's best evening pan. There's a group of you who wait for one special sale, and this is it, the Great American Demo Sale. Chevrolet always has been number one in economical transportation. Cook Chevy Land is the Tri-State's number one dealer. Chevrolet Caprice has been acclaimed the Great American Car. During this sale, you can save over $2,000 on more than 50 demos. So, for you smart buyers who know a good low mileage demo is the best buy, this sale is for you, but hurry. Chuck Lofton back live at the Holman Center with Jim Jones. I wouldn't trade your guards for any. Yeah, I tell you, they're not for sale. They did a tremendous job for us, and I think today was a good indication when your big horse is not hidden, everybody else picks up the slack a little bit and plays harder. Now, as far as your guards were concerned, had you expected coming into this game that you would be uh, relying on them as much as you did? Well, we have a lot of confidence in our guards. Of course, Jimmy Davidson's a great shooter, People don't realize that Jason Hughes is a great shooter also, but he's our sacrifice guy. His role is to get the ball to other people. Then, if you need me, I'll help. Now, so far as tonight is concerned, you'll take on either Washington or Floyd Central. Do you have a preference, and what do you know about these two? We know exactly, well, we've played Washington, so we know a great deal about Craig Neal. All we know about Floyd Central is exactly what you know, what comes out of the media. We'll try to do a heck of a job scouting this afternoon. Some of our good friends will get up on the phone and give us some information, and we'll do the best we can tonight. And all we're doing now is we're just going to give you the finest effort we can and let the chips fall where they may. Well, you did a heck of a job today. Congratulations. Jim Thank Jones, you. It was a Coach fine effort. Princeton. Now back to Mike. Thank you, Chuck. And congratulations to Jim Jones and the Princeton Tigers. Before we give you the final stats, Jim, your comments. Oh, I tell you, Mike, it's a great feeling to... Uh, to be in those shoes right now, you know, uh, you're thinking all the things you have to prepare for now, for tonight's game. You have to do your scouting. So that is, uh, you know, that's the main thing right now. 
Again, the final score, 58 to 54. They added that last two points, I believe. Uh, very quickly, the scoring, Brad Victor had 14, Chris Schaefer 10, Jason Hughes 13, and his counterpart, the other guard, Jimmy Davidson, with eight, six, 14 points. Superb effort is Jim Jones, and the Tigers advance 21 and five. They'll meet the winner of game number two. We are going to join what's happening in progress coming up in just a moment. For Chuck Lofton and Jim Rouse, this is Mike Blake wishing you a very pleasant good morning. Again, Princeton wins it, and we'll see you tonight in the championship of the Terre Haute Semi-State. Good afternoon, everybody.